No. That's not good. I've seen that one coming. Well, we have some work cut over here. Well, hello, tubers. You're having your first look at an 86 Honda 200X that we retrieved the other day. It was close to a 16 hour ride to go get this. And what really drew me to it is so much is original yet and not all cobbled up. I couldn't believe the condition of it. Uh, like the, the fuel tank is even original, which is beyond rare for one of these things. And I gotta show you this here. They had an actual Honda cover on the fuel tank and that's what preserved it. The inside of the tank is really clean too, which I thought was kind of rare. Yeah, the guy even gave me an original Honda cover with this machine, which I guess he said is kind of a rare thing. But uh, it's got a few optional whatever's on it. Uh, this is something I've never seen before on a foot peg here uh, to extend it to keep your foot from kicking off. And I thought, eh, it's kind of neat. I don't know, I'll have to try it out for a while, see how I like it. But I thought they could be made for the other machines if desired. Another thing I never saw before was there's a shield over the brake in the back here. Never seen that before either. He said that was some kind of an option too. And it sounded like something from Honda years ago. Well, this machine here is an 84. It's amazing of the advances they've made in just two years on the machines. I'll make a video of that sometime in the future, all the differences. There are quite a few. One thing that he said too that was on when he got it years ago was this twist throttle. I don't know, I'm not real thrilled about that, so eBay had a thumb throttle that I have on the way I ordered. And actually some of the stuff I went through and looked at a little bit already, I got a bunch of parts here that I already ordered. Uh, I always like to go through all the masters and the wheel cylinders, the carburetor. I'm going to be doing all that stuff, then you get it. Even though things work, it's nice, 10 years down the road you won't have to monkey with it again then, you know. So. The brakes, you leave the master and the uh, caliper, you leave that stuff all alone, well, the rubber start to dry out, so it's got the light brake drag. And, uh, it's just nice, it's neat to go fast, but it's neat to have brakes too. So I'll show you one thing uh, that I already caught on what I'm talking about here. Now when I pull the boot back here, for the master cylinder, you can see all the crusties in there. And that's what I'm talking about, you know that needs attention. The other thing I like too is when you got all the widgets in a purchase machine like this where you got all these covers. A lot of the things that are hard to obtain nowadays, but uh, having complete with all the pieces, it's kind of nice where some things are getting a little harder to get. One thing that was missing here, you got the grab bar in the back. Uh, nobody has that. I did find one out in California. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't believe what they get for that. Be able to obtain is nice and original. Equipment is even better. And at the end of the repair video, I thought I'd put some footage of us going on that ride to get this for those of you who might wish to ride along. Oh, <laughs> well, the other day, we were, I was out riding around on this. I know the spot welded up here was broke and this one was fatigue about riding around. That's rattling away. I didn't get around to fixing it yet, of course, and it falls off. Guess where it ends up? So I squished it all back, but this is what we're up against here. It's supposed to the spot welds there. You can see our broke, and that's where that one just pulled through. So I'd like to come up with something to retain this thing with screws or bolts or something. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit of a journey to get these off. Hopefully nothing busts. And we don't make any new swear words up. But uh, maybe you folks would want to come along for that event. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to put a little PZ blaster on a few things. Up here there's nothing I can do. Use that. I 
segways are very well speed. Sweet. Tappy-tappy. My car muffler expander would work on that. I don't think so. For the part that can really turn bad in a hurry. Well, here's, here's the part that was the thought of having a concern for having a problem. Way to go is good. We're gonna see. Oh, it turns easy already. Look at that, it's busting. Back and forth a little here. So far, so good. And this is the area that I was worried about. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. No. That's not good. I've seen that one coming. Well, we have some work cut out here. Uh-oh, now what? The other one's good yet, though. Yep. That never happens. Good. Yeah, it was turning. This was actually turning, the one that sheared. This was turning in the aluminum, uh, not inside the thread part here. How did I know that? When I change direction, when you're working a, anything with the, goes into aluminum, when you're working it, if you change direction and then you go again, you should feel, feel it seize up. Whenever you're working with aluminum, you should probably keep going the same direction. So that's a little something that I've noticed through the years, how true it is, I don't know. Something you might want to know, because I know I did use that theory a lot in the car applications. And I guess uh, I should have followed my advice here. So, okay, yeah. All right. We'll have to figure something out for that. Now I'm going to start with cleaning the threads here, because I think I can double nut this. I'm going to get the wall on nothing out yet. Let's see. I don't know why, but I figured this part would be a problem. I should have kept turning in the same direction. I hate to say it, but I think it would have came out if I wouldn't have changed direction. Change the Let's see when we get this started. Yes, sir. Oh, the second one on. chunk of tin upstairs for a heat shield and we'll go from there. Now while you weren't looking I tried to tighten up the double nut I had on here a little more. Well look what happened. So now we're going with plan E. This stuff is never cut and dried or in the books. So let's see where we go next. Hey, where we got to heat that. I'm going to get the clutch cable out of the way. Okay, so I can get a better shot for you guys. I'm going to take this off so I can shoot in straight down here for you to watch. Uh, but this screw here has been all rounded out. I really don't care for that. It's, uh, yeah. These are priceless, by the way. If you work on motorcycles, you should have one. Impact driver, when you hammer on this, 
it actually turns this and stuff you'll never get out with a screwdriver without doing that that's what these work great for but uh, let's see if what's left here if we're gonna oh boy that ain't gonna do anything it's moving a little bit which makes it reassuring there again Back up again. Ooh, I'm liking it. We're doing it. Wow. Today's challenge is okay, Plan D. Holy cow, we're getting running out of plans here. Back when an arsenal of widgets, one of these should work to get this dastardly screw out today. Oh, look. We picked the right tool the first time. Yay! Who do I win? Happening! Yay! Today's challenge, get the screw out. You gotta see this. I'll give you a close up. There, oh, good. Look at that bad boy. Whoa! Just ran away. Okay. Well, the other one looks happy, so I think he should go. Gotta find my other driver socket thing. There it isn't. Hey, whenever your friends are looking for something, they can't find it. You go, there it isn't, and watch them look to wherever you're pointing. One of my mean tricks that I always do on everybody. And <laughs> there, there it isn't. I can't find it. It's here somewhere. There it is. It is actually. There, I found my bit. Oh, this is, if you're wondering, this is the difference here, what I was using. So, let's give this a try. That one, screw, looks pretty good. Yeah, that one, that one's more than happy. Comes right out. Today's new game show, Weld on the Nut. Prize will be, can you get it out? We'll find out. Whoa, that should be good. All right. Well, one last option here. I think I'll heat it a little bit. Get a little blaster, maybe it'll help it crawl in. Nice and hot. Help. Said his stuff's all trial and error. We'll give it a minute and we'll see what happens. I'm gonna give it a couple of these. One more of these. Now what I'm gonna do, I got some better lighting here. I'm gonna use my rattle gun. Now this is the one that I always prefer for doing this kind of thing. If it is gonna work, it's gonna work with this gun. I got the dual hammer, Ingersoll, and all that other stuff. This one's really nice for that. You just keep adjusting the throttle up a little more, a little more, a little more. It's either gonna bust or come out. So, I gotta turn way down right now. Let's find out. Cause yeah, a wrench ain't gonna pull us and might as well bust it off if we're gonna go from there. thinking why didn't you use that right away dummy <laughs> oh well I didn't I didn't do all that uh, suspense on purpose by the way folks we're just trying different methods now you see which one worked now here's what I was trying to explain to you folks before for what this is worth this might help you on your adventures for working on stuff spark plugs a steel plug in your aluminum cylinder head what I have seen more than once you start taking them out in aluminum head. If they start to turn harder, you change directions like you do in steel or cast. That'll help rock it out. Aluminum, 
I never do that anymore. You keep going the same direction and whatever comes out, comes out or it snaps. Uh, if you change direction, when you do finally get it out, all these threads are going to have bits and pieces of aluminum stuck in them. So that's a for what it's worth tip from me. That's what I've experienced. Maybe that'll help you out in your adventures at your house. It's been quite a while since I heard the air compressor run with all air capacity, storage, whatever. Uh, anyway, that's where it turns on and that's where it shuts off. So let's get her fired up here. And this one here turns the air on. Okay, I got my safety gear on. We're ready to go here. Another thing I want to show you, they got different grades in them quick lock thingies for your grinder. And these actually last multiple times longer than these. So what the objective here is, is I want to get these tin tabs off. I'm hoping that thing there is solid steel, because then I can drill and tap to whatever size I'd like. So we're going to get these off right now. Let's have at her. I think that'll do it. I think they're solid, so yeah, that's a good thing. The other one off. As usual, things don't always go as planned. As you can see, if you line one hole up, the other one's way off. So I think what I'm going to do here is we're going to kind of hold them off center about yay much on each side. And then I'll just fill these with weld. Uh, there, I guess there's no reason to really even remove this. And the other thing though, it's way closer here than over here. So what I'm going to do is hold it up a little more and then uh, fill it with weld go from there. I'll keep the video moving. I, uh, I took the, one of them gold 3M wheels, hooked off the paint here, and backside wire wheel. So let's weld this on. No, I tack welded this thing on and it's way off center from the holes where it's really got to be to do any good. So I took it on and off a few times and this is what I got, what I came up with. And anyway, I'm going to final weld it now. So. Folks, that's what they make grinders for. Just like uh, they make sanders for paint jobs and ultrafine paper and bumpers. If you're not good at either, you can correct it and make it look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> All right, cleaned up, filled in them holes too where the spot welds broke loose from that little bracket. 
I just do my grinding over here in the corner. That way the little dog can kind of walk through the stuff. We get the more abrasive disc on. I put the green one on where they're a little more flexible and uh, when you get closer to the final desired result, then you go with the, these are the gold pocket wheels and finish it off with that. There, that's the bottom side. Only the ants and grasshoppers see that one. And, uh, yeah. Objective, try not to get the metal thin around where you welded, but I like that when you ain't got a fire to welder up again to give it another final touch. So, yeah, next we head off to the sandblaster. I'm in the back shed here. It's nice when I can use this sandblaster. Uh, you got a half inch line that comes right from the compressor, goes on here. You got your big ball valve here. And you go out the door and you're out in the backyard to do your thing. But due to certain circumstances, yeah, I don't think that's going to be an option for today. Watch the moon gloves. I got that out the central back, so. Yeah, that gets the job done. Moon gloves, moon gloves. That is definitely takes a lot longer than that one out and back, but well, sooner or later it all gets done. See that with the light? Ah, there you can. Yeah. yeah, let's make a couple of studs for the exhaust. stud, put the nuts on there to lock them together and we got something to turn to to install it. installed, a couple of wrenches and at least the two nuts that were locked together. Stud is now installed and one down, one to go. Now see if I had to take the air scoop off to one side of the tank there to get a little better view. Now let's take the other side off. Well that one there I really struggled with. Here's your example. It was a true patience test, but I did get both of them out, and as you can see, they're trashed. So I'm so glad I got this screw bit. It's really been a handy thing to have here. But uh, I had this on one of my other videos. These wire cutters sure come in handy for screw cutters. So you just insert the screw from one side, and then you can cut it to the length you need. Because it's something that you put in a vise that's going to wreck it. So. These work pretty good for that, so let me give you a demo here. There you go. And then uh, 
You always got the one side to insert the screw into. I accommodated a little bit of room for the washer yet that we got to put on, but anyway, nips it off and there's your final results. And I put a little dot of gear oil in each one of the holes that the bolt screws into in case somewhere down the road you want to make sure they come off again. So. And tonight for your eating pleasure at supper time we have baked on header paint. And those new studs, we brushed some anti-seize on them. Here's a tip that I use on a lot of widgets. Uh, this is my gear oil dispenser. And on the bolts, where you can't really get at them from the back side, or like this little nib here, uh, what I'll do is I put a little line of gear oil in there. You don't want to put too much in, in case it's not a through hole, so it hydraulics, but years down the road, you're going to be able to get that right apart. Yeah, we got our pipe all baked and painted up and we're ready for the install. Got some nice little flange nuts dug out of the bin. Like a spring tension washer tape, maybe pop, 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 pop. Parts <laughs> done. Up we're on. Yeah. Clean the wire wheel, the bolts off, and we'll get the seize on them to wire wire. Put out a little dust. Just go to the other nicer. Boing. Another thing, a lot of times, on these type of parts, if you're not sure which way they went, you always got your evidence on each side. If you didn't refurbish the part, which does come in handy for me more than once, especially if you don't have a book. So you can see by the pattern on the back of this, and the pattern was the same on this back guy, so it goes on this way and not that way. Tighten these up and we'll be rocking. One more thing I do that's not in a book. I don't know if any of you caught this or not. This piece of vacuum hose right here. I got a bolt in it so it's rigid. And on the, where it's larger right here, I have a red vacuum cap in there to make it even tighter. And what this is, is I could be sitting on the machine and adjust the idle. No screwdriver needed. Clutch cables on, along with the exhaust. We're all done here. 
So I got some highlights of our footage going to pick this machine up 16 hours away. So let's get that rolling. Well, I'll give you a little rundown here. I was going to take my 86 Ford Ranger pickup to go get that. But the cab's not real roomy inside. A little friend offered to take her Jeep, and then another friend offered to take his aluminum trailer, so we go pick it up with that. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. I get to ride along and more so enjoy the scenery then. So we decided to make a little bit of a scenic trip out of the whole deal here. So we went. Uh, Went through Upper Michigan on the way there and down into Central Michigan where we had to pick the machine up and then came through the bottom of the state, Chicago, and then back up into Wisconsin that way. Well, I don't want to get this wrong, but I know I'm gonna. I think they pronounced the bridge Mackinac. You people know, I don't. But anyway, I thought it'd be neat to have some footage going across this for you people who've never been in the area. Afternoon. How you doing? Doing all right, thank you. Need a no, ma'am, thanks. Four dollars. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. Six. I don't know how to. It's just awesome to see this kind of man-made stuff like this bridge here. Things that they built years ago and uh, become so useful. It comes from somebody's thought, turns into a reality. It's just I don't know, cool stuff. The guy where we're going to look at this three-wheeler I talked to him on the phone he was really pleasant to talk to and, uh, anyway I asked him if it's okay if I film there and yeah, he wasn't real up for that so I got no problem honoring what he wished there and uh, anyway the deal was I was going to go get it the next day and I asked him if he'd save it for us because it's a 16-hour round trip for us to come and get the machine and I heard stories where in the past where people sold things out from under someone who was coming to get them. Well, anyway, he said, yeah, no problem. I'll save it for you on our agreed price. And, uh, and the, the night before, I asked him if he wanted me to contact him uh, when we were leaving in the morning. Didn't seem too worried about it. Well, meanwhile, a few other people were getting a hold of him, sending him texts, and they were quite interested in the machine. He wanted to know if we were coming, and I told him, yes, we are on the road right now and on our way, and I'm going to take the machine. I'm sure it would live up to everything he said, because the guy seemed really nice up and up on everything. So. And besides getting the machine, I also got a tour of their place. I like that kind of stuff. They had some John Deere tractors there, and they were working on one. They showed up, and it was his brother, I believe, and another guy. Pretty cool, interesting people to meet. Of course, they had another three-wheeler that was his brother's, and uh, yeah, seeing what they do. Oh, and, oh, geez, and then to top it all off, the next morning, that guy even contacted me. He was just making sure that everything went good and made it home okay. That's the kind of stuff that's things from the past, but it's still here yet with certain people. That's pretty cool. Interesting things one can see going down the highway at times. No idea what this is for. Well, I had to get you some footage and a little story here for the toll booths in Chicago. There was a little kid. My parents would come through here to uh, go see my aunt in Chicago. And back then they had like a little stainless steel hopper, basket, funnel type thing. You'd roll your window down and you'd toss like 35 cents in it, or a quarter or something, and then the gate would open. It was all automated and you'd be on your way. Check out the pricing now. Things changed just a wee bit. Of course, not for the better. <laughs> See, I don't know if they're gonna consider us a car or with us towing a trailer, if they're gonna add a little oh, extra. Oh, if you need more, then I'll- Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you got money. I got right here, yeah. Say, but what do we know? 
straight. Three sixty-five. Three sixty-five. Out of five. <laughs> I'm not gonna deal with the ones right now, hon. <laughs> Good. Perfect. Keep that handy. We got many more Thank to you. go still. <laughs> I think we got like four or five more to go. In so. the in the song, money is playing while we're getting hit. <laughs> From the Toro Sniper. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I think we got like five more to go. So. Oh, happy, happy. Room yeah. for room. comment maybe a like if you like a lot of time put in putting one of these together and i'd really like to get your back here again if that's possible so take care tubers bye bye